Hello, my name is Nicole Lamartine and I'm the Sorensen Director of Choral Music at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Welcome to our postcard from UCSB Choir's home. As the new Director of Choral Music, this is my first quarter, first year, with UCSB Choir's. To start in the pandemic has been a real challenge. I've never met my students before and we've never seen each other in person. The opportunities are many. The opportunities challenge us and stretch us in ways that we've never imagined. We're learning new skill sets. We're learning how to be engaged in new technological platforms. And we're learning how to communicate and be together even when we can't be together. We are at a paradigm shift where we can't depend on the old normal. But we have the opportunity to create the new normal in choral singing and the choral arts. The new normal is scary because it's not yet been charted, but we will chart it, we will innovate it. We will move forward into the unknown. This has given me a great opportunity to think about the mission and vision for UCSB choirs. Our mission statement is to empower innovative excellence through exploration, intention, and connection. My goal in starting this position was, of course, to build the choral program. First and foremost, this quarter, I wanted to provide meaningful music-making opportunities to the students in which we can engage with each other and build a community where each of us belongs. I hope that you will join us in journeying into the new normal as UCSB choirs. Hello everyone, my name is David Lozano Torres and I am a current DMA student here at the University of California, Santa Barbara, where I conduct UC Santa Barbara's Lumina. Because of the pandemic, all courses this quarter have taken place online which has placed a special challenge on our choral ensembles. Now, more than ever, we have felt the need to share meaning, bring hope, and inspire through song. As we join the efforts of the new Swanson Director of Choral Activities, Dr. Nicole Lamartine, we focus on building a new ensemble with strong relationships, a new identity, and excellent artistic music making. We are pleased to share some of those thoughts and experiences with you today. Hello, my name is Si Miao. I'm a first year pre-sociology major and I'm from Shanghai, China. Hi, I'm Claire Lappinga and this is Ollie. And I'm from Palos Verdes, California and I'm a biopsychology major. Hello everyone, my name is Chia Xin Yu and I'm a film and media studies major and I'm from Taiwan. Hi, my name is Sam. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Media, Arts and Technology, and I'm from Montreal, Canada. In this pandemic, everyone's kind of isolated. I believe that when you're alone, you need music, and when you're lonely, you need friends. Being in a choir gives you both. I tend to get so wrapped up in my own stuff, I forget there's anything else out there. And music making just allows you to realize that there's other ways to express yourself and there's other things that are important. And also singing allows us to calm ourselves down and reminds us that life is enjoyable during the quarantine. Making music projects me in this alternative universe where Everything is okay right now, and this feels great. Hey, what's up? My name is Maria Jose Calderon. I am a third year biological anthropology and music double major, and I'm from a very, very small town called Fraser Park in Southern Central California. Hi, I'm Paige Dixon. I am a second year writing and literature major, and I am from Santa Cruz, California. Hello, my name is Becky Kosofsky. I'm a second year economics major from Belmont, California. 
Hi, my name is Olivia. I'm a third year biopsychology major with a minor in music and applied psychology. I'm from Fremont, California in the Bay Area. This quarter, the students were tasked with finding a new name for the ensemble. As a result, UCSB's Women's Chorus will further be known as UCSB's Lumina. When we were choosing the new name for the choir, it was very important to me that it be both descriptive and inclusive. And Lumina is exactly that. It's descriptive of the tone that we hope to produce as a choir of treble voices, light and beautiful. And it's descriptive of that tone without being descriptive of who we are. When I think of light and Lumina, I think of good. And when I think of good, I also think of hope. We chose this name because we hope to bring light, joy, and happiness to our audiences through the music that we make as a choir. Fall 2020 quarter being super tough for a lot of different people for many, many different reasons. I think everyone needs a little bit of hope. Choosing a new name for the choir was no small task. We really wanted to encapsulate what this choir means to us in a title. So, we all suggested names that we liked, and then voted as a group. When we were choosing a new name for our choir, we were looking for something that was more inclusive, something that was profound, and something that truly represented the core of our choir, strengthening each other, giving to our community, and spreading joy. Hi guys, my name is Xin Xin Tan. I'm a linguistics major with music minor. I'm from Shandong, China. Hi, my name is Monica Granados and I'm a second year theater major at UCSB. Hi, my name is Kendall Keller. I'm a junior and I'm from Hillsborough, California, which is in the Bay Area. Being in the choir this quarter was really great. I gained a lot, not only in terms of music concept, but I met a lot of amazing people who are thoughtful, creative, and really supportive. Being part of the Lumina UCSB Choir this quarter helped me feel like I was part of something. That I was part of a community of like-minded people that would gather twice a week to sing together. And this feeling was truly powerful. These girls are amazing. They are my friends. And we have the greatest, goofiest teacher. So it's been really helpful for me mentally just to go talk to people and just feel that even through the camera even if you're not in person you can feel that energy of happiness and just know that this is what we like to do. I am Lindsay Moorhead Parker and I am the assistant conductor for this quarter. The whole process of rehearsing with a virtual choir has been quite the adventure. We use a program called Jamulus, which allows us to rehearse in real time, something that would have been nearly impossible had we only used Zoom. Now, I live in Idaho, so I consider it a really big privilege and blessing to be able to rehearse in real time with the choir. When I was recording my part, it felt weird singing alone to my iPad and not being able to harmonize with the rest of the ensemble. But in the next rehearsal session, we listened to the edited track and it sounded amazing. Being in choir through the pandemic has shown me how resilient and innovative we musicians are. We were able to create music thousands of miles apart and give something for our audiences to listen to through these crazy times. What I hope for the future of this ensemble is growth. It's been bigger in the past and I hope with our new name it will encourage even more people to join us and create an even bigger ensemble. I hope that someday soon Lumina will be able to meet in person so we can finally make music in real life and hug the friends that we've been getting to know for months now. It would be fun for us to perform for UCSB students at events on campus and even perhaps alumni events. In the future, I hope this ensemble continues to be a shining light in the UCSB community, a source of joy for those who listen to our music, and a close family for all of our members. As you have just heard, this quarter has given us experiences both good and not so good. Life constantly holds challenges, 
but it is the attitude and actions we choose that can help determine a positive outcome. I can promise you that UCSB's Lumina will continue to strive for excellent music making throughout the pandemic. I believe that we will grow from this and become stronger because of it. As we continue to mold and shape this ensemble, we will continue to create a second home, a safe haven, a solace. Music touches and heals us in ways that nothing else can. And I'll close with this. As the great Leonard Bernstein said, this will be our reply to violence, or in this case, likened unto the pandemic and hardships. To make music more intensely, more beautifully, and more devotedly than ever before. May you all be safe during this pandemic and find music that can bring peace into your life. Thank you. Thank you, David and Lumina, for your beautiful inspiration. When the pandemic hit this spring, those of us who sing felt a profound loss for our community. Singing is vital to our common humanity. It brings us together in community, and it gives us a profound sense of belonging. Singing is our true north. Singing is our home, and singing is our center. Home is the feeling that your soul tells you, regardless of a location or a person. Home is playing on my swing when I was five, because it reminds me of being carefree. Heimat ist da, wo man sich nicht erklären muss. Translated, home is where you don't need to explain yourself. This quote has resonated with me for a while, because I feel it captures what we all really need in a home. A place where we don't constantly feel the need to justify ourselves, but rather a place where we can feel fully welcomed and at peace. Home is a kind place where I don't have to walk on eggshells. It's important to feel comfortable where I live during a time of constant upheaval. Home is family. It's my mom, my dad, my sister, and even my dogs. Home is the feeling of setting down a heavy book bag after a long day at school. Home is the smell of familiar food. Home is the warmth of the fireplace, but also the warmth of the laughter coming from the next room. The most important thing a home is, though, is a more during turbulent times. Home is church. Anywhere I am in the world, if I find a church, I always feel safe and like I'm home. No matter what language or culture, there's always a community who is there to welcome you in. Home is where the heart and the soul feel comfortable and loved. 
This is important to me because it can be any number of things in your life, which shows that home can be anywhere you are if you let love come to you. Home is something worth articulating, identifying, rehearsing, perpetuating, sounding out, teaching, respecting, showing, and owning. Over the course of this quarter, our chamber ensemble met with several choral instructors and musicians in order to learn about group singing techniques from around the world. Each culture has its own unique way of making music together, derived from their rich histories. Even while the individual cultural styles were sometimes vastly different in their sound and quality, it was obvious that music of every kind spotlights some fundamental human experiences. We identified a few common motivations behind the traditional folk music of each culture. To welcome, to marvel at the beauty of nature, and to express deep emotion. This quarter served as evidence of a universal truth that is often forgotten. While we may have our differences, ultimately our similarities are far more profound. When I think about home, I think of the many places that I've called home over the years. Being born and raised in Hawaii and going to school on the East Coast, now I'm in Santa Barbara where I'm engaging with the chamber choir virtually this quarter. Something that we're learning from these culture bearers from all over the world is that home is not a singular place. Home is a place that has multiplicity that has understandings that are culturally specific, that these places of home are places that we construct them to be. And that is a powerful message. As a heuristic device, home allows us the possibilities to make homes where we need them to be. And that in this time of COVID and the pandemic and the virtual nest that is Zoom, we understand that home is where you build a community and that home above all is a place where you feel safe and you belong. The region is between France and Spain, um, right on the Bay of Biscay. And for a long time, it just wasn't a place anybody wanted. My grand great grandpa came over in like the twenties um, but that was my grandpa's first language, and there are there are no words for I love you. There are no words for anything really when it comes to emotion. Basques are known as sheep herders. There are thousands and thousands of Basques that came over and became sheep herders. There are Basque dancing groups everywhere, and um, we all get together in diff at different times. Everything that I know is kind of a frozen culture in time from like between 1900s and 1950s. 
and they they froze their culture that they took they took from Europe. They froze it in America. It's almost gone. You know, it's not like that in the Basque country really anymore because what we know is what it was like in the 20s. Basque people were persecuted for speaking the language. There was it was outlawed to print what the young people speak. It's called Batua. It's a it's called a unified Basque to save it. There's only, I don't know, 500,000 people that speak it in the world now. And in Basque, which is how I learned to count it, it's bat bi hiru lao bosh she, bat bi hiru lao bosh she, bat bi hiru lao bosh she, bat bi hiru. Then you pause and you turn however you wish. I love this song for a lot of reasons, but it makes me think of my dad, um, who is He's quintessentially Basque. He's got black hair. He's got dark skin. He's thin. He's got a flat head. Um, he's not a great singer, <laughs> which is, he really would like to be. Um, but he is an amazing dancer. Al pie de un These songs are called Canto Cardenche, Cardenche songs, because when you sing them, they're supposed to be ripped out of your body in the same way as the Cardenche thorn. So every Cardenche thorn um, is known because it's extremely painful and because it rips apart your, your flesh. And the way you sing a Cardenche song is that it sort of ripped out of your body and every Cardenche song, that's why you're never going to find a Cardenche song that's, oh, I'm so happy. Oh, what a beautiful day. They're typically about grief, death, or lo lost love. Those are like the three main themes in Cardenche songs. And the way you sing them is that they're almost supposed to sound like you're screaming. So you sing them in the part of your voice at the upper range where your voice sort of wants to break. You're, you, you on purpose sing them in a part of your range where you're uncomfortable. And uh, this is the only, as far as I know, uh, style of polyphonic singing that grew out uh, in Mexico. Uh, that's completely a cappella. In 1985, the political and economic movement called Perestroika brought about changes throughout the Soviet Union. In 1986, the Conservatory in Moldova established the Department of Vocal Folklore, which allowed students and faculty to sing, study, and develop Romanian folklore from Moldova, which had been forbidden under earlier Soviet governments. She continues to collaborate with Rom Romanian colleagues from Iași, Suciava, and Bucharest, and is involved in a project to safeguard the extensive musical folklore archive kept at the Moldovan Academy of Music. I really love Moldova and I, I would live there if I could. It's a wonderful, wonderful place and um, I love the people, I love the music, and I have to say I love the food and the wine very much. Of revival of traditional music from Moldova. Well, well, Moldova, that we are Romanians actually, but um, separate uh, historically. You know, and even the Moldovan language was um, Romanian language, uh, but using Cyrillic spelling so that it, it looked um, more like Russian. A lot of different folkloric zones and not only costumes are different in the zones, but the songs, the, the music also, um, the, there are, well, the, there are all its Romanian music, but every zone has some different things. And this is very interesting to study, actually. Moldova is a very rural country. It has the largest rural population of any place in Europe and perhaps in you know much of, of Western uh, the Western world. And so that means that the villages have big differences between them. They are named uh, professional of oral tradition.
Am mai să mă vin totodată, tra-la-la-la-la Și-a vrut mai ca să mă bată, tra-la-la-la-la Dar acum mai să bovesc, tra-la-la-la-la Că-mi ești drag și te iubesc, tra-la-la-la-la I, I feel you uh, more close and more and more uh, our like our uh, friend and uh, welcome to Moldova. He ala ne ma pu mai ne la kama kani la ahe ahe. My grandmother practiced her culture in secret, as many of our grandmothers did. So for so many of us that look like me or uh, are of my generation, we have the added responsibility now to take that res to take this work and to launch it forward and to make it more known and to make it more rooted. Now, since I have the privilege, as many of my colleagues do, to speak Hawaiian as a first language to know this world as a Hawaiian, as, a, as, as the central nucleus of my identity. And that is my gift to you for OEVA in with those two verses that we've learned. You have now a responsibility, now that I've taught you that, to share it and to sing it and to um, keep it alive because the way that our music survives and lives on is through these moments where I pass them down to you and you pass them down to another person. So you are now part of this lineage, you are now part of this community. So uh, similar to Joel, I grew up, I was a Southern Baptist preacher's kid. And so I grew up uh, singing in church and since I was a preacher's kid, I usually sat in the back row and experimented with different parts uh, and learned to sing a lot of different harmony lines just to entertain myself because I had to be in church a lot more than other people. <laughs> that oral tradition of passing this music around is uh, really half the fun of this music because I love uh, sitting down and thinking I know the song and then hearing a brand new version of it from somebody else that does the harmonies different than I've known it or whatever. I just want to stress that this whole idea that rural music is somehow a canned sort of thing that everybody does the same way is a total myth. And um, it's a very uh, regional dialect, accent oriented kind of stuff because it's very native to whoever happens to be singing it at the time. So in the during the depression era, right before bluegrass was born, um, and then right after World War II, there were a lot more people needing jobs than there were jobs in the South, especially. And so there's a lot of songs with this theme. Uh, I don't know what percentage I would guess of bluegrass songs are about having to leave your home and miss it. And so there's a lot of these longing for home kind of songs. If I only had my word. This quarter, we've learned how cultures around the world express themselves through music, in particular, how they express the same human need we all have, for home, a sense of belonging, and inner peace. I'm reminded of Gene Roddenberry's favorite saying, infinite diversity in infinite combinations. By seeing how people express themselves differently, live their lives differently, we are afforded new eyes to see what's most important how much we have in common. Singing, at least for me, brings a sense of togetherness. No one should ever have to feel like they're alone, whether it's singing in person or just being there on Zoom. It's nice to be around people who love to sing. Learning the same music together lets me know that there are others who are exactly where I am in life at that exact moment, just reading the sheet in front of me. It's very reassuring.
For many of the cultures that we've been learning about this quarter, it seems that home for them is coming together and creating a safe space where they can share a song in order to heal the harm that they've endured, whether it comes from cultural oppression as a result of Western colonization or just the general hardships of life. Al pie de un árbol. Mi alma se sienta triste y aluminada por la luz de la mañana. Salió y me dijo que era esperanza vana donde a la vez mejor me duermo yo. Of the pieces we've learned, the one that feels the most like my home, that is warmest and happiest, is OEVA. It is a call to protect the precious home of the Hawaiian people, to keep its integrity for current and future friends. I like that idea because the use of the word friend feels welcoming, but also implies the onus of responsibility for the stewardship of the home is shared with all friends. That's kind of the way it has to work in my home. We are all friends honoring each other, and to do that means there's a give and take.
I think the main concept of home means the ability to identify with something. At the end of the day, I think people relate home to whatever or whoever they feel their identity is most tied to. For me, that person is my mom. Whenever I'm with my mom, I feel like I am home because she helped shape my identity, and I am very grateful for that. Capable, strong, hopeful, confident, loved, supported, belonging, happy, content, curious, warm, retreat, free, honest, true. Secure. Light. Carefree. Let go. Relaxed. Safe. Comfortable. Relief. Accepted. Peaceful. Secure. Safe. Comfortable. Secure. Happy. Accepted. Peaceful. This year has brought unimaginable things to our lives, and sometimes we feel lost. We hope tonight that we bring you a sense of belonging. We leave you with a gift of song so that you can belong to our circle and culture of singing. Their voices are silent, their 
is the sigh that is wafted across the troubled way. Tis a wail that is heard upon the shore. Tis a dirge that is murmured around the lowly grave. Oh, hard times come again no more. Tis a song. Would be merry to sighing all the day.